Hello and welcome to my brand new series here on IDTV, Sewing 101. After receiving a few questions about this shirt that I'm wearing right now, actually, I was wearing it wrapped a different way. I posted a few reels and a few times to my story about how I made this shirt and got a lot of comments basically from you guys saying that you always wanted to know how to sew and were interested in learning but didn't currently know that much about it and i decided why not sit down and actually share with you some of the knowledge that i have just from my own experience i've been sewing since i was probably 11 or 12 years old and i'm now 24 oh my god i'm 25 i am now 25 years old so that's a lot of years of sewing experience so let me share my knowledge with you so of course today's episode is going to be all about my sewing essentials so all of the things that i think you need to get started and to get through the first basic projects that you're going to be doing in future episodes i have a lot of ideas of things i want to show you all the way from like the different functions on a sewing machine to how to take in a pair of pants or um, so on a zipper or a button, things like that. But if you have any requests of specific things that you would like to learn about, then be sure to just comment down below and I will add it to my list of videos to make in the future. But without further ado, let's get straight on into this video because I'm going to try to keep them as short as possible. So if you do have any further questions that I don't cover in today's little episode, then again, just comment down below and I will answer all your questions down in the comments. Brief little introduction into me. As I mentioned at the very beginning, I have been sewing for a long time. I first got a sewing machine when I was maybe 11 or 12. I mean, technically I guess our family got it. My auntie is a very good sewer and she had an old machine that I'm assuming she upgraded to a new one. Honestly, I was so young, I never even asked. I was just grateful that we had one. And so me and my mom went to the um, fabric store and bought a whole bunch of patterns to make clothes for my dolls. So that is how long ago it was that I first started sewing. I wasn't very good and my mum was never really that into it, but she knew how to like, replace buttons and like do the basic things. So yeah, that's how I got started. I've never done any formal official training, but I have just toyed around with it over the years, making crop tops here and there, adjusting things, and then moving on to bigger projects as I got a little bit more confident. And as some of you will know, I actually have recently moved countries. So most of my sewing supplies or pretty much all of them are back in storage in Adelaide, which seems like such a waste, but moving here to Montevideo, I had to start from scratch again, which is perfect for this video because I only have the things that I've genuinely been using for the last six months. And as any sewer will know, the longer you, or the more time you spend sewing, the more projects you do, the bigger a collection of just random things you accumulate. But today I'm just gonna show you the things that I use all the time and that I think pretty much every beginner will use depending on what kind of projects you're doing. Let's just jump straight on in. I do have a sewing machine next to me that I think I'm gonna get to this at the end because that is the most expensive item. And also you genuinely don't need that straight away. You can do a lot without a sewing machine and that will save you a lot of money and at least you'll kind of get the taste of whether or not you even like sewing before you fork out a few hundred dollars on a machine. Now the number one thing most people will buy is a little sewing kit like this, upside down. It is gonna be kind of bad quality, I'm not gonna lie. These usually only cost you a few dollars and it will come with everything from like little needles to thread. There's a few different colored little spoolies of thread, but this isn't the best quality, but it usually will give you a decent selection of colors, some beiges, red, black, white, navy, you know, some colors that are essential for mending clothes, because this is pretty much what you would need to be able to fix a button, um, sew up a little hole in something. It comes with little scissors, a few little pins. Again, these scissors are only really for cutting thread. You're not gonna be cutting fabric with these or anything. You also get a thimble which currently I actually can use. Normally I have acrylic nails on and these do not fit over them. I don't tend to actually use a thimble, but if you're doing a lot of like embroidery work, these can come in handy. Or if you're just very new to sewing and you're a bit worried about pricking your finger with the needle too many times, then a thimble is a great option. They also come with one of these, which is a needle threader. It's this little piece of metal. Essentially you push the end, there's like a little loop of wire. You wanna push that through the end of a needle and then it opens up to a little loop of wire. You thread the thread through the wire, pull the whole contraption back through the hole of the needle and suddenly you've threaded the needle. I very rarely use these, but it is nice to have just in case. So moving on from the little sewing kit, the next thing I would definitely recommend you upgrade on or just grow your collection in 
is some pins. These are pretty much standard. You can find these in almost any sewing store around the world. They're these bright colored ones. Great for working on fabric of all different colors because you can always see the pins. But keep in mind that these are not ironable. So if you're pinning fabric and then you iron over to like flatten out seams and things, these will melt. So I would highly recommend getting some of these and then also some pins that just have a little metal end and not a plastic little knob, but some more pins is good. You'll also want to get some extra hand sewing needles. Everything from a super fine needle, they are perfect for sewing fabrics such as silk or other fine delicate fabrics to a much thicker needle, which you will use if you are ever sewing anything with like wool as the thread for like decorative reasons, or if you are just sewing through much thicker fabric with thicker thread, the thicker the thread, the thicker the needle has to be and all that kind of thing. So different sizes is great. Also a pin cushion. I have to hide this one currently because my dog is obsessed with chewing on it and pulling out all the pins. A bit crazy, but I do have a little pin cushion and it's just got a bunch of little pins around it. So that is definitely what you would want to start with. Also, this is something that you can definitely live without, but even if you're just doing small little projects, like fixing things like buttons and um, fixing holes and things, I highly recommend a seam ripper, which is what this is. You just go in and you can like rip up any mistakes that you've made and it just makes everything a whole lot easier. Of course, you can go in with a pair of scissors and snip out any stitches that are wrong, but this will just really speed up the whole process. Speaking of scissors, when it comes to scissors, you're gonna want two, at least two pairs. So these are fabric scissors and you only want to use them for fabric, nothing else because otherwise they will become blunt a lot quicker and you'll need to replace them. These can get a little bit more expensive if you're getting like fancier ones, but essentially you just want a pair of really nice sharp scissors to be cutting through fabrics. If you're just doing like very small mending projects, you might not need these, but even if you're taking up um, like the length of pants, things like that, and you want to cut off the excess fabric, fabric scissors are going to save you a lot of time and heartache. Because if you try to go in with some paper scissors like these ones, it's going to be all janky, all jagged, and it's just going to be a lot harder. Paper scissors, however, you do want to have on hand because if you're cutting things like pattern paper or just anything other than fabric, you want to do that with paper scissors. Again, just to preserve the life of your expensive fabric scissors. Another thing I didn't mention earlier that you will want to replace out of your little mini sewing kit is just different threads. I tend to just buy a new colored thread anytime I buy new fabric or if you again have something that you need to mend a hole in, having just different colored threads on hand is going to be very handy. You can either get them in these little standard sizes or in big spoolies like this. I only have these big ones in black and white because they're the two colors I use the most and it just saves you from having to go back to the store every time you run out of thread. Because if you are working on a larger project, these ones, you might need more than just one little roll of thread and then you have to stop what you're doing, get in the car, drive to the store, come back and it's just, you know, it's a whole process. Something else essential is a measuring tape. Definitely get one of these essential for measuring out fabric, for measuring out hems of things if you're taking out the length of sleeves or just taking your own measurements when it comes to working out what size of pattern you need to buy even or, you know, measuring like body parts, so the width of shoulders and things. If you're following patterns or following a tutorial, you're going to need to know some measurements of yourself to be able to scale their instructions to your size otherwise what's the point in making your own clothes if they're not even going to fit you right and they can only fit you right if you know your measurements so definitely need one of these measuring tapes a ruler just is not going to cut it you do want to rule it as well sometimes it's helpful for marking out straight lines when you're drawing on your fabric but this is going to be more important than a ruler you can just make straight lines with this you just want to go in and like make sure it's all even and everything. So I yeah, highly recommend getting one of these pretty early on. Okay, and quickly, I know I'm talking a lot, but you will want some chalk or something to draw on the fabric. You can get all sorts of fancy markers for fabric, but really all you need is some cheap chalk. I have this whole pack of white. We do also have a blackboard, so I'm not just, this isn't all for sewing, but we have some white and some different colors. Cause if you're, you know, sewing with white fabric, White chalk is going to be pretty useless, but if I were to draw on this in green or orange or blue, it's going to show up a lot easier. Now, my last two suggestions are definitely more of an added extra, and that is elastic and some little, what are these even called? Like snap fasteners, little press studs. 
So these are just good for finishing off projects if a press tab breaks on your jeans or a little hook and eye falls off and you need to replace it with something. Having these on hand is just gonna be nice and easy. You can get them in a big pack and they're usually super cheap. It's again, just good for extending the life of things that have broken. Maybe they've fallen off and you've lost one half, whatever it is, having some more is good. They're also very useful just for like, if you are creating projects from scratch, having something to finish them off and close off the, the openings, very important. And these are a lot easier to sew on than a zip. And elastic is very useful to have. Again, if you're making projects from scratch or when it comes to like pant waists that are, have elastic or sleeves, elastic in items will wear out, especially if you're buying things secondhand or if you just had it for a long time, elastic wears out. So being able to replace it is a very good skill to have. I have a whole lot of different sizes. This is super thin elastic, this kind of medium one. And then I also have a very wide, like one inch almost elastic so yeah elastic is also very helpful and finally a sewing machine now when it comes to like when do you purchase a sewing machine that's definitely up to you i think mine cost me around 200 dollars here you can definitely get secondhand ones for cheaper um different models in other places of the world you can probably get something similar to this for a lot cheaper but electronics well this isn't electronic but Machinery here tends to be pretty expensive because most of it is imported. My first sewing machine, as I mentioned, was actually a gift from my auntie. So it was a second hand and it was a gift. This is the first time I've ever bought a sewing machine brand new. But it definitely is going to upgrade your sewing abilities by a lot. There are, depending on which machine you get, there'll be all sorts of different functions. And if you want me to run through some of the functions on this machine, then I can definitely do that in a future video. But um, yeah, this is just your basic average sewing machine and highly, highly recommend getting one of these if you're going to be doing large projects such as making things from scratch. Pretty much anything you can do on a sewing machine, you can do by hand, but it will just take you a lot longer. Like I can sew one meter straight line in like 30 seconds, but if I were to do that by hand, it would take me at least half an hour. So it's going to it's gonna save you a lot of time if you get a sewing machine. And the brand of this one is a Panavox. It is a Model 11C. I don't know if that means anything to you, but um, yeah, that's just the one that I happen to have on me. In Australia, I did have Janome machines. I had a regular sewing machine like this one, but it was Janome. And I had an overlocker, which is just like a different kind of sewing machine that's good for finishing off edges. It will cut the fabric and stitch it as you're going. I'll try to find the clip online and insert it, but an overlocker is again, very great, but another additional cost. And you definitely don't need one of those for quite a while. I don't have one here. All I have is this baby and so far so good. So that is it for today. Those are all my essential sewing supplies that I think you should get to start out with sewing. Again, when you choose to buy certain things, it's totally up to you. Even just the little sewing kit is going to be great for mending things but it's not going to do too much more than that because the threads will run out pretty quickly and you are going to want you know to just upgrade from that pretty soon so if you have any questions comment down below and i'll be sure to answer them and if you do want to see more of these videos and again like this follow me if you're not already and comment down below to let me know but otherwise thanks for watching and i'll see you next time i'm going to try and do at least one maybe two of these every week go forth and <laughs> create. <laughs>